Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. This is part two and it's pour day. Pump has just arrived on site. He's got all of his hose out. Concrete truck rolls up shortly after. CMEX is bringing this load. And this is a six sack pea gravel mix. And I have 1% accelerator in it. We're using wire mesh on this one. I'm in a really hot um, region. Reaches um, I know temperatures of 130 degrees in the summer here. It's rare, but it happens. You could consider it close to Death Valley type weather region. So I'm using the wire mesh rather than big steel because of that reason, the heat. Right here we clogged up. That's why the pump stopped and then looked over towards the truck because he could hear the difference, the change in the motor sound of the pump. So he shut it down, he went over here. What he's gonna do first is he's gonna release the pressure from the hose. And I think that's a CO2 or some air pressure. That way um, the back pressure on the uh, concrete, when he opens up this hose, it's not gonna explode. First thing he's checking is the manifold for a clog. So he busts that reducer off, runs the pump to see if it's gonna pump to that point. And we're gonna find out if it does or not. Okay, the manifold's good, so that's an easy clog to fix. When you get into the manifold clogs, that's more time consuming and a bigger mess. So now he's breaking off that reducer and there should be a clog in there. That's typically where they are. Now, as he's looking down the pipe, trying to knock the concrete out, he notices a big chunk of debris in there. And I'm gonna take a look at that myself real quickly here. Because I've got the head cam and I wanna get a close up on this object. You can see it right there. That's what clogged it up. Now that could be uh, one or two things. It could have been in the mix and it slipped through the screen. Or the more likely case scenario is it something that was in the pump that broke free in the pump and then came down the uh, hose. Got it running really quick. Only took about 15, 20 minutes max to get that pump running again. This is a 10 yard load that we have here. So with that 10 yard load, we should get the entirety of this side of the driveway. We may have a little bit left over and that's okay because we can put it down the side yard. Now I just fell back here and I'm running the four foot magnesium bowl float with a rocker arm on it. And I've got, I'm running three poles. So when you're going three, four, five poles you need those rocker arms otherwise you're not going to get it back how we both floated there and it wasn't touching in the middle. Tristan, the new guy, first time I worked with him, first time I worked with the other finisher, Greg also, and this particular pumper. Basically, I'm developing, developing an entirely new team out here in Arizona. And so far, so good. have a fifth wheel hook you know to unhook your fifth wheel without having to crawl underneath there that's what I'm using to pull up the wire mesh
Craig on your right there. Tristan's on the left of the screen. First time I think I had to break out the shovel right here near the end. That's the beauty of using a pump. And um, the guy that's running the pump, you know, that's, that makes the differences. It, uh, you either get a shovel man or you don't. So we are good. This pumper was good. We did very minimal shovel work. All the screed pins came out right now. Now we're, everything's just a wet screed off of the uh, what we've already established. screeds are aluminum I got a 10 and a 12 footer now we're getting down to this narrow end so now we've transitioned over to a custom cut 2x4 to do the screeding now if you take a look at the concrete here how it's getting really wet well, what happened is the first truck washed out into the pump when you should have washed out into a wheelbarrow and then we would have we wouldn't have had this wet primer coming through again but it wasn't a real problem because you know things like this happen a lot and if you've did it enough times you know how to fix it so I just spread it out I just spread it thin all the way out and now we got to the, the dry mix going on top I would carry the knife my life was saved by a guy who carried the knife all the time how I wouldn't say that I, I was eight years old on a motorcycle I, I was eight years old I had Batman cape I'm a towel you know I'm a tech my mom gave me a ride on a motorcycle, you know, bought a enduro motorcycle. Went up the block, turned around, came back, and the, and the towel got stuck in his pocket, you know, and then sucked me right into the like, wheel spokes, and I'm all fucking crammed and choking to death. Oh and then God. after the hacksaw, trying to hacksaw the fucking spokes out, I'm choking to death. And this guy came out with a knife, cut the towel right off my neck, and <sighs> I came back alive. Oh, wow. That was an interesting story that Greg had just told there. And I can imagine that happen. I, and I can reflect upon it a little bit. Um, riding a bicycle and getting my uh, flare flared pants bottoms caught in the um, sprocket, you know, a few times. That's never fun. But on a motorcycle, I can imagine that would be uh, really dangerous. Here's a four foot walkway coming out. You notice I didn't put any steel in this side yard. And it doesn't, you know, it's just foot, foot traffic here, so it doesn't really call for it. You know, we're just gonna put a lot of joints in there and um, call it a day. This is all getting a non-slip broom texture and I'm gonna use the horsehair broom on it. I used the nylon the other day before this job that you'll be seeing soon and I really didn't care for the texture so you know I end up going back to horse hair it seems like every time every time I give a nylon a try you know the horse hair always comes back
Wings bowl floated. Now it's time to break out Big Blue, which is just an oversized Fresno. It's pretty heavy, so you don't need weights on this. It's heavy enough all by itself. If you're just using one of those narrow Fresnos, you're going to probably have to put weights 9 out of 10 times. But with this one, um, you just go for it. And I've got it on a rocker arm as well, so I can really get out there quite a distance and still bring it on back. Greg's on that walk and joiner. I mean, this, I mean, you would have thought, you know, when I bring these three new guys together, me, Greg, and Tristan, you would think, oh, they're going to, you know, they're not going to mesh or whatever because they never worked together before. But, you know, when you've got real professionals coming together for the first time, things just work. That's just the way it is. I mean, look at an all star basketball, all star football. It's kind of in that category. There I got kind of stuck to the mud with old Big Blue because here I am in the shade now. So that's why she got stuck up right there. But I broke her free and then I just went over it again until it got nice and smooth. <music> accelerator and because uh, this is about the first day we got that was over um, 60 degrees in a few months and it turned out to be around 75-80 so it really kicked off so we had to really hustle on this one to keep up with it cut a couple tool joints in this as well I'm gonna cut one off of that corner that you see up there on the right of big blue I'm just gonna come across there with the joint and then I'm gonna run it the other direction as well which lines up just by luck with the existing joint in the driveway and you'll see that when I pull the dry line to pop it before I uh, or did I eyeball it I may have just eyeballed these joints with no lines yeah, yeah, see I just I just measured over and then I just eyeballed it, dropped my straight edge and just cut it across. And I got lucky because I hit that corner on the other side. See that? Well maybe a half inch off. But this run I said, you know what? I'm gonna have to put a line. That's a little bit too long to guess. These are the only joints I'm going to do on this large section. And then I'm going to come back and um, saw cut. We're going to end up with about seven foot squares once I end up saw cutting it all up. This back corner and a little bit beyond that joint will be a tough shed. So right after I joined it, I went right right to um, the funny trowel to knock out the joint lines and kind of cover up some of Big Blue's lines.
now what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to hit it one time off the sliders as well and then broom it. This is the second load. We had a five and a half yard cleanup. That's, this is the second load, this side of the driveway. And this is the second pass with the bull float. And I'm just sprinkling a little back along the edge of that driveway so we can maintain it uh, uh, flush to the existing there. Because a lot of times when you're sloping away, it'll try to slump off and you'll get uh, a little drop in the concrete. So you gotta sprinkle back in those situations. So it looks like the pumper is about cleaned up and we're just about ready to kneeboard. So you can see how fast it all happened pumper's still here and we're almost ready to slide and broom. happens to be uh, Mojave Valley, Arizona, right in between Bullhead or Fort Mojave and Needles, this job location. This mix, by the way, was a really great mix, finished beautifully. happens on these kind of jobs when you get a uh, put a beautiful piece of concrete on both sides of some existing um, you end up going back and you end up doing the middle part so you get another job so the better you do those two sides now you got to almost do the middle to make it all match here's that horsehair working its magic here I put a little water on there and then I push the broom across and it's crucial the amount of water I mean if you put too much water you're just pushing cream and you're actually weakening the surface so you want just enough water to work make the broom work but not too much so where you're pick, pushing a puddle of cream otherwise that all wears off or it could even just fall off if you introduce too much water to the surface but if you do happen to get too much water on there and you're brooming and you find, well, you could just go ahead and keep doing that and get yourself a nice sand wash. And people will pay extra for those sand washes too. You can actually do it by mistake. But inevitably you will get a sand wash in about 40 years, just natural erosion.
particular trowel I'm using here is a 20 by 5 and then I've got my little one which uh, is a 12 by 5 12 by 5 is my burner some people like a 3 by 8 for a burner Greg grabbed the horsehair broom and now he's uh, brooming it out the balance of this other side of the driveway and then Tristan's going down on the sliders on that side yard. He's jointing that out every eight feet. Broomed it on the way out. Now here we are on the next day. And I've snapped some, it rained overnight. So that worked out really nice because it actually, it's a good curing agent, you know, water uh, for the concrete. So it was wet in the morning when we got here and snapping uh, lines on wet concrete is uh, challenging because it wants to rinse it away. So as soon as I snapped it, I had to get on it before it dissipated. And it did dissipate before I got through this cut, so I had to stop the cut, re-snap, and then proceed. That's the beauty of that blue chalk. It's easy to rinse off, which is what you want to use. On, if you want removable chalk, then you go blue or purple. If you use red, you're not going to get it off. And probably not even if it's wet. It's going to stay. It's going to stain. This is uh, the Medusa from Skillsaw. Real nice, handy, portable, lightweight, early entry saw. I could hook a vacuum up to that, or I can do a water attachment. It's real compact, fits in a nice bag, um, rolls beautifully straight. I didn't use a vacuum on this or a water attachment because there was already water on the ground, so very little dust. See that nice pattern there that we're developing here little seven by seven squares should never have a problem with this one with the wire mesh about four four and a half inches thick 3,000 psi you just can't go wrong with it here's what I'm doing on all these joints you, see, you notice this uh, DeWalt 9 inch cutoff saw battery powered I'm just kind of deepening the edges wherever my uh, saw cut ended I went and deepened every end just for water runoff also um, to assure that it will crack on those lines now I've got the DeWalt blower I'm just kind of getting rid of some excess dust and then it break out the pressure washer. Because the ground was wet or the concrete was wet while I was saw cutting, that um, dust started to bond right to the concrete. Matter of fact, if you ever have to do a patch on concrete, it's best to do it, you know, the very next day or sooner if you can. Um, and everything bonds really nicely at that point. Otherwise, you've got to start using adhesives and stuff. So I used a pressure washer and knocked that cream off. But here it is, it turned out really beautiful. That's gonna even look better when it cures out. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification button, that way you'll be notified as soon as we drop another video. If you want to see part one of the, the setup and demo, you can go back to it through the link in the description. Have a good one. Bye.